Senior Treasurer. Welcome to the program. Thanks very much, David. So let's start with your thoughts on this by-election result. No repeat of what we saw in Aston a few months ago for Labor. What do you put this result down to? Oh, well, first of all, uh, David, congratulations to, to Cameron Corwell, the new member for Fadden. I acknowledge uh, him and the work of his team and also thank Letitia Del Fabro, who was this wonderful local community champion who ran for us. And we're very grateful that she flew the flag for us there in Fadden in what has been historically very difficult territory for us. Now, we are neither surprised nor troubled by the outcome in Fadden. It was entirely what was expected. Uh, if anything, uh, the LNP underperformed against the historical average, and that's after spending more than half a million dollars on the seat, which we think was probably at least 10 times what Labor spent on the seat. So unsurprising, uh, untroubling, uh, congratulate the new member. Uh, this was entirely what we expected. But was there any message, do you think, for the government on cost of living? Oh, look, we already understood uh, before this uh, by-election in Fadden that people are under the pump. That's why the primary focus of my two budgets, the government's economic plan, the primary focus of the government is in providing some cost of living help so we can take some of the edge off these pressures without adding to inflation. That was true before Saturday. It's true after Saturday. It remains our focus. And similarly with the seat itself. I mean, this was a, a safe blue ribbon LNP seat with a double digit margin before Saturday. It will be all of those things after Saturday. We are aware of the pressures on people before the by-election and that's why it's our primary focus. I mean, you could say Queensland generally is pretty safe uh, LNP territory, a bit of a blue wall. Does Labor need to make better inroads in your home state? Oh, of course we do. You know, it's been hard yards for us mm. in Queensland for some time and uh, obviously, you know, we need to do much better in Queensland than we have for the last decade or so. Uh, there are opportunities for Labor here in Queensland. I think Queenslanders do uh, respond well uh, to the type of leadership that Anthony provides. You know, this was hardly Labor heartland, this seat uh, on the northern Gold Coast, uh, which has been very, very difficult for us for a really long time. But I think more broadly, there are opportunities for Labor in Queensland. We do need to d perform much better here at the federal level. Uh, and obviously, as a resident Queenslander, uh, I'm very focused on that too. Let's turn to the Reserve Bank. Uh, did your decision not to extend Philip Lowe's term as Governor have anything to do with his handling of interest rates? Oh, the decision we took to make this historic appointment of Michelle Bullock to be the ninth Governor of the Reserve Bank was much more about how we take the bank forward into the future rather than any one decision or another that's been taken in the past. Uh, I cherish the Reserve Bank's independence. I'm looking to uh, invest in that independence rather than undermine or diminish it. So this was never about uh, really one person or really uh, any of the decisions taken in the recent past or any of the commentary in the recent past. It's because Michelle Bullock, I think, has the best combination of attributes to take the bank forward. She's an outstanding economist a respected leader, and I'm really proud of the appointment that we made on Friday. But we know after the last interest rate rise, you said yourself, Treasurer, that Australians would find it difficult to understand, difficult to cop. Are you saying it's wrong to interpret your decision to replace the Governor as uh, any sort of reflection on his performance? Oh, look, my decision, uh, which was announced on Friday, or my, re my recommendation to the Cabinet and the Cabinet's decision, was all about you know, how do we make the Reserve Bank the best version of itself. That's the motivation for the Reserve Bank review. That's the motivation for the appointment that we made. I've gone out of my way to say uh, yeah. that I have a mountain of respect for Phil Lowe, and I mean it. You know, I've worked closely with him. I've known him for a long time. He has car carried himself with characteristic uh, dignity and professionalism throughout, including, by the way, saying that Michelle Bullock's appointment was a first-rate appointment, and I appreciate that as well. This is more about the future than it is about the recent past. Uh, and Michelle Bullock, I think, as the uh, outgoing governor has said, is a first-rate appointment. You respect Philip Lowe. Uh, we hear that. Did you respect his last interest-rate decision, though? Well, the point that I made then, uh, and I'm you know, happy to stand by it, is that people who are under pressure 
uh, you know, want to understand uh, why these decisions are being taken. Uh, and I know that my responsibility is to explain and sometimes defend the decisions that I take in the context of the government's economic plan and, and the budgets that I hand down not the as Reserve Treasurer. Bank. No, similarly, the Reserve Bank uh, has an important role to play to explain the decisions that they take. And that's the point I made at the time. Uh, and I don't think that's an especially controversial mm. point. Would you understand uh, if Michelle Bullock as Governor were to lift rates? Well, clearly the, the existing Reserve Bank Governor and the new Reserve Bank Governor, when she takes up the position uh, around the middle of September, they will take their decisions independently. They'll weigh up all of the evidence in the economy. They'll explain that decision and sometimes they'll have to defend that decision. And that won't change when the Governor of the Reserve Bank changes. Let's talk a bit more about uh, Michelle Bullock. Look, she hasn't given a lot of public speeches. Um, for those who are trying to get a better understanding of what approach she's likely to take. You've talked about her leadership qualities, her experience. Mm. What about when it comes to this core role of, of tackling inflation? What can we expect? Well, you can expect someone who is fiercely independent, uh, who carries a lot of respect and regard. I mean, you rightly acknowledged in your introduction, David, uh, that her appointment's been welcomed across the board. Economists, business, the head of the union movement, uh, the opposition in the end. Uh, the outgoing Reserve Bank Governor all consider this to be a good appointment and that's because Michelle is an outstanding economist. She is a respected leader uh, and I think that she will run the Reserve Bank in a really inclusive way uh, and she'll run it with uh, gravitas and with heft and drawing on that mm. really quite substantial experience and expertise that she has accumulated over a long time. But you've spoken to her obviously more than we've seen publicly as part of this decision. Did you talk to her about her approach on inflation? Well, I talked to really uh, all of the senior members of the bank at different times. Uh, certainly, Governor Lowe, I've had a number of conversations about inflation and with uh, the Deputy Governor, Michelle Bullock, as well. I mean, that's, again, uh, part of my role as, uh, of, mm. as Treasurer is to confer with senior members of the Reserve Bank. That's been happening already and it will continue to happen after this leadership change. So what can we expect? I mean, home buyers, the big question is, is anything going to change from the old governor to the new governor? You, you know better than the rest of us. What can yeah, we I expect? Well, I'll tell you what won't change is I won't all of a sudden, because we're getting a new governor, change the approach that I've established, which is to not preempt decisions that they might take, mm. uh, not to second guess those decisions either. I'll continue with that approach. Uh, governor Bullock, when she takes up that role and replaces Governor Lowe, uh, she will be a person of immense experience and expertise, an outstanding economist and leader. Uh, and. Uh, she will lead a Reserve Bank that weighs up the economic conditions as they face them at each meeting. But can we expect a similar approach, a consistent approach on tackling inflation? Well, again, I'm not going to sort of preempt the decisions that uh, Michelle Bullock might mm. uh, recommend to the board. Uh, I think that's really important. You know, this is a, a long-standing and cherished feature of the Reserve Bank is that it is independent. Michelle Bullock is fiercely independent. Uh, and she will uh, undertake this uh, task with professionalism and diligence, drawing on all of that experience and expertise that she has. In a speech she did give a few weeks ago, Michelle Bullock said the uh, economy would be closer to a sustainable balance point if the unemployment rate were at four and a half percent. Do you agree? Well, there's obviously a debate amongst the economists what full employment is, whether it's around four and a half or a little bit lower than that. Uh, that's been a more, more or less a perennial feature of the economic conversation for as long as I can remember. Uh, the point that Michelle Bullock was making in that speech, which again I think is relatively uncontroversial, uh, is that as the Reserve Bank forecasts and the Treasury forecasts have inflation moderating over the coming months, they do have a tick up in unemployment as well. And I've been upfront about that. You know, the challenges in our economy are substantial, global and domestic. Uh, well, I think the slowdown in our economy is expected in those forecasts to be significant and that will have implications for the unemployment rate, which is the point that Michelle Bullock mm. was making. So do you agree the economy would be at a more sustainable point with an unemployment rate of 4.5 per cent? I use different words to describe it, David. I mean, our expectations in the Treasury forecast is that unemployment uh, will tick up. It's at 3.6, which is pretty remarkable. We've got an incredibly resilient labour market. It's one of the big strengths that we have going into this period of global economic mm. uncertainty. 
Uh, there will be a debate amongst the economists about what full employment looks like in their definition. We're expecting it to tick up a bit as the economy slows as a consequence of higher interest rates and global economic uncertainty. Do you think it's possible to get inflation back down to the target zone without driving in unemployment higher? Well, it remains to be seen. I mean, clearly the, the Reserve Bank's twin objectives are price stability and full employment. Uh, mm. And that's deliberate. That's something that I'm very keen to maintain after we implement the recommendations of this review. And the, a government had, the government has a similar approach. You know, we're taking the edge off these cost of living pressures without adding to inflation at the same time as we invest in the right kind of uh, workforce into the future. And that's because whether you're Reserve Bank or the Albanese government. We want to see as many people in jobs as we can, but we've got to get on top of this inflation challenge, which is the primary challenge in our economy. The primary challenge, no doubt about it. For the government's part, we've, we've you know, heard you talk about what you've done in the budget. Is there any more you think the government can or should do to put downward pressure on inflation, or do you think you've done enough? Oh, well, obviously, at every budget, you make sure that you're aligning your, your plan and your policies with the economic conditions as you confront them. But what we have rolled out so far, David, has been textbook fiscal policy in the circumstances. Uh, moderating inflation, but higher than we'd like. Global uncertainty. And we've done a range of things uh, which are very important. We've got the budget in much better nick, not at the expense of providing cost of living help, but in addition to doing that, our cost of living help is targeted in areas like out-of-pocket health costs, electricity, uh, rent and some of the other particular pressure points. Uh, and we found $40 billion of savings over two budgets compared to zero dollars in savings in the last Liberal budget. So all of those things are about getting the budget in much better nick at the same time as we provide help for people to get them through a difficult period. And as Governor Lowe has acknowledged, our budget is actually taking uh, the edge off inflation rather than adding to it, and that's important. If mm. down the track we need to do something differently or we need to do something extra, of course we contemplate that down the track. But right now we are rolling out uh, what people would consider to be a textbook fiscal policy in the circumstances we confront. So just on that, if, 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 uh, if inflation remains stubbornly high, isn't getting down fast enough, you are prepared to do more rather than just leave it to the Reserve Bank? Oh, we've always acknowledged, David, that we've got a role to play here. And that's why we've got uh, a, the first surplus in 15 years. Our predecessors were unable to do that. But we've done that because we've banked so much of the upward revisions to revenue. Uh, we found $40 billion in savings. We're still providing cost of living relief. All of those things are really important. If our economic plan and our, and our, our next budget in May uh, needs to take into consideration a different set of economic conditions, obviously we'll do that too. Now, you're travelling later today to India uh, for a G20 finance minister's meeting. Philip Lowe's uh, heading there as well. What are you hoping to achieve there, Treasurer? Well, a couple of things, David. I mean, this is an important opportunity in Gandhinagar in India uh, to confer with my uh, ministerial counterparts and also for Governor Lowe to confer with his central bank governor uh, counterparts as well. Uh, understanding what's happening in the global economy is absolutely central to making sure that our economic policies and plans are aligned with these sorts of conditions that we're talking about. And what's happening right now is the pressures that are coming at us from around the world are being felt around kitchen tables and so we need to understand that. So a big part of it is understanding how we can best align our policies here with what's happening around the world. But also, you know, we want to make progress on sustainable uh, finance when it comes to investing in the energy transformation. We want to make sure that the Pacific is front and centre in the world's considerations about climate change and about other issues. Uh, we want to make progress on multinational tax reform. All of these issues are really important and they'll be part of the discussions over the next couple of days in India. How worried are you about some of the weaker data coming out of China at the moment? It's, it's critical for the Australian economy. Oh, it has been a focus, David. I'm not going to pretend uh, otherwise. There have been uh, some developments out of China that we are monitoring incredibly closely. Yeah, the global economy is a uh, pretty precarious place right now. Uh, the Americans are proving to be resilient. The Chinese economy has shown uh, some worrying signs. Uh, Europe's in recession and others as well. And so, as always, we're trying to take into consideration uh, this really quite substantial global economic uncertainty. It is having implications here and combined with what we're seeing from the impact of these rate rises, uh, it's one of the reasons why we do expect the Australian economy to slow considerably. All right, Treasurer, good luck with the trip. Thanks for joining us this morning.
Appreciate it, David. Thanks very much.